I watch a lot of YouTube videos and someone that I was watching, they went over talking about their portfolio and risk management and it reminded me of what I did. And I actually thought now is an ideal time to start talking about that again, because we know we joke about this. I say we joke about it. We talk about this. I don't think people take it seriously. You know, you need to have a plan. You know, if, if you're just going to go in and just, I'm just going to buy a smattering of whatever, not have any idea about when you're going to take profit, what they even are, why you're going to do it, how you're going to balance it. You're going to end up losing money. And, and that's a hard thing to say, but the realities are, and the statistics are there, you know, 75, 85% of everybody who trades loses money. You know, we'd like to think that in our group, we've got a collective bit of alpha to maybe reduce that number slightly, but we ain't going to be eradicated. So you just got to be, and I said this a year ago and I'll say it again now and I'll keep on saying it. You have got to take that responsibility yourself to understand why you are in it and how you are going to manage it. And at some stage, I know Simon is going to, you know, he'll start having a look at what he wants to do with his portfolio of getting back in, looking at it in a bit more detail, whether or not he does what he did last time or something completely different. Try and have an understanding of what you want. And then when he starts talking about what he's going to do, see if that marries in with what you, you like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what I did, how it works. I'm going to try and give a few examples of how others can do stuff. And then the other thing I want to talk about is profit taking. And we really need to talk about profit taking. You need to get into a position where you're not afraid to take profits. I did take profits in the bull run. I don't, I looking back, I definitely didn't take as much as I should have done. But it's a step stone, you know, first bull market I was in, I didn't take any profits. Last one I was in, I did take profits and I felt relatively comfortable. I didn't take enough. And that is something that I'm going to work on going forward into the next one. So understanding a system that you can use to, to help you take, take some profits. Okay. So what I did, and for those of you who have been in the group for a bit longer than a year, you'll remember me talking about a three pot system. I did a video on it and the video is on Vimo. You can have a look at it here. Actually, it's only had 53 views. Uh, the first half of the video, I'll say the first half, the first couple of minutes is Simon going through his crypto portfolio. I would ignore that. I only say I ignore that because I don't know that he's going to go uh, through with that again. So skip forward about two minutes. The rest of the video is only about five minutes long. And I just go through the three pots. I'm not going to play the video for you that I effectively used and how I moved assets from one pot to another uh, to, to effectively build a bag. Um, and the three pots that I, that I had, I'll leave this on the screen at the moment. Um, I, I had my safe pot, my blue chip alt pot and my, my gambling pot. So the safe pot was BTC and Ethereum. That's all was in it. Um, and I never touched it throughout the entire bull run. I just, you know, that was just what was there. I kind of treat it as a savings or a pension fund effectively. So that only had two, two assets in it. My, uh, next pot, my blue chip pot. Now that started off originally with about five assets in it. Uh, it grew over, over the period and we'll talk about that in a moment, but effectively these were medium term holds. These are ones that I had, I had belief in, but ultimately, you know, even dots sat in this pot at the time, I knew I was going to take profits on it. They were just a stepping stone to get me more BTC and more Ethereum. And so when they got to a certain level, I would sell, I'd either take profits into cash or I'd convert it into BTC and Ethereum, um, and I'd move it into pot one. And then there was pot three and pot three is where I spent the majority of my day to day uh, activities. And this was my gambling pot, my small cap alt pot. It wasn't my trading pot. It wasn't my derivatives trading pot. I didn't really do that during the last bull run. Um, I did it during the bear market. So yeah, come on for me. Um, but this was short term holds tokens that I have absolutely no care in the world about, but I just even have heard about them. I think they've TA, which might suggest that they're going to pop in a moment, whatever it is. And I would move into that and I would try and get in and out of those as quickly as I possibly could. And again, all I was doing was at least taking my, um, the funds that I put in, drawing that out, moving that into my blue chip pot. So buying more of the blue chips with effectively free money, waiting for that to continue to go up and then moving it across the BTC. And that worked incredibly well. And I was able to take a relatively small amount of money. Granted, I was able to buy at a very good time, very low and a lot earlier than most people in the RT group. Um, but I was able to take a very small amount of money and grow that exponentially over 18 months, 24 months. 
And all it was was just moving money. Uh, sorry, moving, yeah, moving money from different pots and just being very disciplined uh, with how I did it. Now, you don't have to have three pots. You don't have to, you can have 10, you can have two, you can have, well, if you have one, you've just got a portfolio. Um, however you decide to do it. But it's just about having a bit of structure and a bit of rules as to what they are. Now, before we sort of go through some examples, it did fall down for me and I'll, I'll explain where my issue became. Um, what I found was by the end of the bull run, I probably had over 90 assets, nine zero assets. Um, that was very one difficult to manage in terms of where they all were because they weren't all on centralized exchange. They were all in different wallets, etc. Uh, and two, it cost me a lot of money, particularly when I was dealing with DeFi in gas fees. And I didn't realize how much it cost me in gas fees until I went into um, doing my tax returns and it sort of listed out the amount I paid for gas. And I wasted a considerable amount. I mean, tens of thousands, I would suggest, in do dollars in just gas fees alone. And so, it, you know, I thought I had done a lot better than I actually had. But, you know, the cold, hard facts of where the figures were, assuming that the tax calculation was correct, suggest that I actually spent a lot more in gas, which, you know, ate in significantly into my profits. It is what it is. But, you know, going forward, I want to adapt that. So how am I going to do this differently? Well, you, you've probably seen on my watch list. Um, I have a portfolio watch list here. And this is, this is fair. You know, long term hold, you can pretty much read as pop one. I don't know if Dot's going to sit in there, if I'm honest. I'm trying not to be married to Dot. I love it. I think it's going to do really well for me, but I will be taking profits from that. So it, it kind of, you know, my heart tells me it's a long-term one, but my head's trying to tell me it still should stay in the medium terms. Medium terms are my pot twos. And so this at the moment is where my pot twos going to be. I'm going to have a look at BNB. I talked about OKB, the exchange token of OKX. I might use that one instead. And so if that's the case, it will either add to that or it will go. But you can kind of see that we're only talking about 10 tokens there. And then the shit coins. So, I mean, we can, six of these coins are actually only three because it's gas BTC and gas BUSD and on BTC and on BUSD. These are just the spiky fade trades. So they're not ones that I'm particularly holding. I'm just trying to build some more BTC. Um, Swissborg, I just hold a lot of their tokens for the last bull run, so I don't have it. Doge, I will buy $5,000 worth of Doge, and I'm just waiting for an Elon tweet, and I'll sell. Um, XRP, it did very well for me. There is a huge army. I don't really care about the token. But if they win that case with the support of the army that they have, I can see a very short-term spike on that one. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy in on that. And then XTP was that TAP token uh, that I bought. And I'll be honest, I've actually already sold 80% of that token now because I've remembered that it's a short term, it's a shit coin. And I bought more dot, more glimmer, more near with it. So, you know, I'm building up um, those portfolios with me. So I, I made 11x, well, probably about average, about 8x by the time I sold the rest of it. On that, I'm absolutely happy. And I've been able to buy dot and, uh, and glimmer and near with that. So great. And I don't care that I bought them at the prices at the back today and yesterday when I bought them. And then I got some of the AI ones, which we bought recently. But again, I've sold 75% of those and I'm just holding the dregs. And this is what worries me. This is where my problem was. Is I kept on holding on to dregs. Before you knew it, I had 90 tokens. So I need to tidy this up. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. I kind of need to keep my Swiss Borg because that gives me cheap on and off ramp fees. I'm going to keep my Doge. I probably need to be a bit disciplined with what I'm doing with these. Uh, I probably should have sold after the last one. I don't know. But... That's all about portfolio management. You know, we, I am starting to build my portfolio and I need to have an understanding in my head of what I want to do going into it. And this season, full season, whenever it is, I don't want to be having, I don't even want more than 15 tokens. I'll be honest. I want under 15 tokens. The vast majority of them are going to be on either decentralized exchanges, which I know how to use and I'm happy to use or centralized exchanges with a lot of liquidity. I want to be able to move in and out of these very quickly. Um, and they're just some of the rules that I'm setting. Now, I think it was Tim mentioned Siam used to just pick the top two of every sector and go with it. There's, well, there's, there's tens of sectors. You might end up with 30 tokens there. You have no idea if they're any good. Plus the top two, what are the chances that they're the ones that are going to make the massive gains? And this is where I want to talk about how the number of assets and tokens you have is going to be different from everybody else. 
it's okay if you're carrying seven figures or six figures in your portfolio size. You might be able to spread your um, your allocation across a significant amount of tokens because you can still buy an awful lot of those tokens. But you've got to remember, you know, whatever your portfolio size is, it's still out of 100%, you know? And if you only have, let's for easy math, say you have $10,000, that's the size of your portfolio. That's a lot for some people. Uh, and you can do a lot of damage with that. But if you still decide that you're going to go into 20 or 30 tokens, you're only going to be able to buy 500 to th you know, three to $500 worth of every token that you buy. Well, is it really going to um, get, you know, a 10, 15 X on what it is that you're buying? Potentially not. So then you have to look at the smaller cap one and the risk of those succeeding are far greater. And, and so you, you, you find yourself in a position where you've spread yourself too thin and you're not going to make the big gains to move in. So, so to move on to the next level. And when I say next level, I mean the size of your portfolio. Whereas, um, use Dot as an example. So Dot, I mean, look at the Dot chart. Like, this is on the three day time frame. Okay. I mean, it's pretty much flatlined down here. Hasn't it? Where? Oh, where was I? I, did, I drew something. Yeah, I, I thought I drew something. But it's, you know, there's the top, right at the peak of the parachains launching. And then since then, it's just absolutely melted, capitulated down. And let's face it, since June, it's pretty much ranged in this area from under $8 to around about $4. So, you know, I've just decided who really cares if I'm buying at $6 when I can see what the upside of it is going to be. But, if we try and draw, you know, good old fashioned uh, Fibonacci extensions from top to bottom. Okay, so let's let's say that dot gets back to the the um, I was going to say one eight, but let's just say it gets back to the point five level, thirty dollars, because we can keep the easy math here. And you've bought in at six. It's still a five x from where you are. So if you bought, I don't know. Is you've got your 10,000 still, but you're only buying a limited amount of tokens. So you're only buying five. You've bought um, $2,000 worth, but you 5X that. You've got a nice, healthy um, $10,000. You know, you've already made your portfolio size back just on that one coin. Whereas if you would spread it across, say, 30 different tokens, there's no guarantee that you're going to get that back there. Obviously, there's no guarantee that, um, that Dot's going to get to $30. But I like to believe where it is, where it stands, and, and following that it has that we will at least see $30 again. Um, and so for those of you that do have smaller portfolios, I would really consider, I'm just going back to it so I'm talking about this thing correctly. I would really consider limiting the amount of tokens that you have. And now then you've got to ask yourself, well, what is it that I'm wanting to get out of this? Because if you're trying to make as much money as possible. Yes, you still want to limit the amount of tokens you have, but you're gonna, you know, you buy Bitcoin, does that only ever see a 5x? You know, is Ethereum the play? Could, could Ethereum get to 15 grand in the next bull run? It's a potential 10x there. And so it's then a conversation you need to have yourself about what it is that you're actually putting in there. So understanding how much you've got to play with, how you want to divide that up. And then from that, you can kind of work out where you want to try and balance that risk. And it is a case of getting those funds as uh, allocated to, to tokens that, yes, you believe in it, but have as much potential upside as you can stomach the risk for that. Um, but then also the absolute huge thing is understanding that you need to take profit at some stage. And then, then it's a case of how we take profit. And over the coming months, I mean, I talked about it all last year when we were trading. And I'll again, continue to talk about it. But taking profit is one of the hardest things to do. It's something that's very rarely spoken about because FOMO, and it's, uh, you know, oh, I could go higher. And that always, it still unnerves me sometimes. I have to give myself a bit of a talking to to decide to take profit because you know, money in the bank or stable coins can be recycled. You know, that's what this note is. You can either put it in a, in a, a side uh, wallet just to use on other projects that you find, or you can actually take it out the cash and treat yourself to something. Hey, we're in crypto to try and make money, actual money, not, not paper money. Of, oh, well, my portfolios were $400,000 now, the high bull one, because I didn't bother taking any out. It's now only worth 40,000, you know, we've got to learn to take that. And